Stuffed bell peppers is a quite simple, low calorie dish that is also pretty good for meal prep. So let me show you two types of filling. I will start with four peppers, one green and one red for every filling, but you can also go for the yellow or orange ones, it doesn't really matter. Now the more traditional way to make stuffed peppers is to cut off the top of the pepper and remove the stem. An easy way to remove the inside of this is to make small cuts with your knife on the four spots that are connected with the pepper. Then go in with your hands, grab it and give it a slight twist and it will loosen up and you can remove it very easily. Nice and clean. You can fill this now like this, but actually the in my opinion better way to fill peppers is to once again cut them into halves and build kind of boat style peppers. Not only will the filling cook faster this way, but also in my experience it is less of a mess to eat stuffed pepper like this than eating them as a whole. So I will cut all of them into 8 little boats and set them aside. For the veggie filling I will add 4 cloves of garlic, 1 clove per pepper and 1 big white onion. Now I will dice the onion in fairly big chunks, I like them like this in the pepper. Some people don't really want them that big so just give them a chop after dicing them. I would smash the garlic with my knife so they peel easier and then you have the choice. If you want and have the time you can fry the onion and the garlic in a little bit of oil so they caramelize and develop more flavor. The peppers will taste better like this so if you have the time I would recommend you doing this additional step. However you can also just add them raw like this. Next is bread. This will help retaining moisture and make it juicier. So I will cut off the crust and then slice this first into planks turn it and cut it again into very small pieces. You can also add breadcrumbs if you want, I would use around 10 grams per pepper. I will add 2 slices of bread, chop everything up and lay this aside. Now this step is optional. I will add 100 gram of buttermilk into a bowl. Buttermilk has only 1% of fat and will add the acidity that I personally really like. If you don't like this however then you can also use water or some broth. Next is of course one package or 9 gram of gelatin. This will make everything juicier and replicate the mouthful feeling of long braised meat. Give this a stir and set it aside. Now let's talk meat. The classic version is to add ground beef, in this case it's 150 gram of extra lean with 5% fat. However, you can also add 150 gram of chicken breast if you want. All you have to do is to chop up the chicken breast into very small pieces. So I will first try to slice them into equal sized cubes and then again chop them for 50 to 20 seconds until they have almost ground chicken size. Whatever meat that you use, you don't have to pre-cook it, it's unnecessary. You can fry this if you want to develop some additional browning, but you can also add this raw. I will show you both meats as a filling in a minute. The last thing is the carbohydrate filling. You can add rice if you want, I won't add them into this version, but if you do, you have to pre-cook them in water. I tried adding them raw, they don't really get cooked in the meat mixture, it doesn't really work. Now let's assemble. First 150 gram of ground beef goes into a bowl, followed up by one slice of bread, then half the diced onion and I will press two cloves of garlic into this because I will fill two peppers. Now I will add half of the buttermilk mixture, so 50 gram and four and a half gram of gelatin and then 50 gram of egg whites. You can also add one whole egg into this but I don't really taste the difference so I will just add the egg whites that will help binding everything. Next is the cheese and I will add this into the mixer instead of on top later on. This is 30 grams of fat reduced gouda, it has 250 calories on 100 grams of cheese. And the last step are spices. I will add a generous amount of salt, 10 to 15 grams of black pepper and then you can experiment with this next but I like to add cumin and a little cayenne pepper for some heat. And that's it! Now clean your hands and mix everything for a minute or so until you have one big meatball. So. Now we'll spread the filling evenly into 4 pepper boats, it should fit relatively well and set them aside. For the chicken version it's almost the exact process. Add the meat, followed up by the bread, buttermilk and egg whites, then the veggies and the cheese. For spices however I will change something. Salt and pepper will go in first but then I will add in 1 teaspoon of turmeric and 1 teaspoon of chili powder to make this more oriental-ish. Mix everything and fill up again 4 pepper boats. I will spray some oil in a baking dish, add all the peppers in and this now goes into the oven at 160 degrees celsius or 320 fahrenheit. I will set the timer to 40 minutes but check them at around 30 the first time with a thermometer. So this is the result after 30 minutes and as you can see the inside of the chicken is at 75C or 167F which is a perfectly safe temperature. And honestly they look pretty nice, everything is melted and they are super juicy. Now you can either eat them right away, maybe with some rice or potatoes or you can also place them into a container and place them in the fridge. They will keep fresh for around 2-3 to three days. So the macros for all 4 stuffed peppers are 842 calories, 48 grams of carbs, 22 grams of fat and 116 grams of protein. And how about a high protein frittata? Sounds good? So click on this video.